I'm going to share the screen and then read a couple of examples of I do this, I do that from the New York School and ask uh, Davey, Lily, and Tan to comment in any way they like about the effect of I do this, I do that, thinking that some people watching this webcast won't be used to that. It's a, it's a kind of a thing. It's a hallmark of the New York School, and it's new to our course, roughly. So I thought it might be interesting just to look. So here's the screen shared, if I've done it right. Can you see that pretty well? Um, not yet, because the uh, stream is a little bit yeah. on my computer, so. Okay. But I think I will be able to. All right. Davey, can you see the screen share pretty well? Okay, I'm just going to read a couple of these samples. Uh, O'Hara, classic. It is 12.20 in New York, a Friday, three days after Bastille Day. Yes, it is 1959, and I go, get, I love that, yes. 1959. And, and I go get a shoe shine because I will get off at the 419 in East Hampton and 17, at 7.15 and then go straight to dinner, and I don't know the people who will feed me. I walk up the muggy street beginning to sun, and have a hamburger and a malt at all present tense. Here's Hanif Abdurraki uh, in USA versus Cuba, which is a poem that's relatively new. It's certainly new to the main syllabus. This is the beginning, an homage to O'Hara. It is 3.15 on a Saturday and I am in a car on I-95 on the way to the soccer game and Nate is riding shotgun, which is also the name for when you plunge something sharp into a can of beer and split open its aluminum shell before swallowing its urgent sacrifice. And I once saw Nate do this five times in one night before the Mount Union game. And we got to the field late the next morning and it was almost as hot then as it is right now in the traffic that isn't moving. Uh, I'll just do two more. Um, I really like guests 20. It's not classic. I do this, I do that, but close. Sleep is 20. It certainly isn't 20 sheep. There weren't that many in the herd under the gold crest of Sierra Nevada. It's more like 20 Madison Avenue buses while I go droning away at my dream life. Each episode is important. That's what it is. And finally, uh, Bernadette Mayer, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. When it's time to go to bed, there's still a few hours left to read. I'm dreaming twice as much as before. I spend all my new time lying in bed thinking, last night I saw Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And tonight, when I came into my room to go to work, I found an old seed pod on the floor by my desk. In the movie, you see one of these. If you see one of these, it's time to die. It's time to write some letters. OK, so. Um, Davey, Lily, and Tan, I would love to hear any observations you have about I do this, I do that. Starting with Davey, please. So uh, we had a little bit of this conversation yesterday in my office hours and two of the students, so I think as we mentioned before, several of us are teaching the credit bearing version of ModPo at Penn with Penn undergraduate students. And two of those students, um, Kira Lucas and Sophie Nadell came to my office hours yesterday and were asking me about I do this, I do that. And the conversation we had is that part of what the I do this, I do that sort of accumulative or like sort of listy format offers us is the ability to inhabit multiple identities simultaneously. So for Bernadette Mayer, mother and poet and partner uh, all at once. Uh, for O'Hara, um, friend and colleague and consumer and queer community member and pedestrian and poet all at once. And that part of what I do this, I do that gives us is that in accumulating different thoughts, activities, features of quotidian life, uh, it helps us assemble how different identities come together in our lives in a way that's simultaneous, in a way that might be thought of uh, in other poetry or in other ways of thinking as isolated identities, that they really accumulate and layer on top of one another in the New York School poems and in the I Do This, I Do That format. Wow, that was great. Thank you, Davey. That's, that's such a great a definition modified definite modified modification of the usual definition that's really great lily what are you thinking i'm thinking almost um cinematically that um the and i do this i do that uh style of writing lets there be both a 
counter narrative and a larger narrative at the same time, so to speak. Like there's the person navigating the space and then there's something going on like the rest of city life or the rest of the family life going on as, a, as another larger space around the person's narrative. So um, we get to see O'Hara's New York City and more, like know that there's more New York City happening that he's not seeing because we know we're getting a subjective slice of it while he's encountering and bopping off of other things and people he's seeing, maybe sometimes in ways we like, maybe sometimes ways we don't like. Lily, follow-up question. Does the use of the present tense uh, uh, aid and support that sense that you just described of, this is a slice of what I'm seeing and there's a lot else that I'm not. Does present tense have anything to do with that? Yes, I think so. Sorry, there's loud construction outside my window if you can hear that. Um, yes, because it's almost like a tracking shot in a movie or a TV show. like there's a motion to pre the present tense as like, as the person is noting what's happening live, we are getting that live feed almost. A live feed, I love that, thank you. Yeah, live feed is a perfect thing. When we, when we these days are using some kind of medium to get a live feed, we know we're so conscious that there's so much else going on that's not in the live feed. That's, that's really good. Hey, Tan, how are you? All right, thank you, how are you doing? We're great. I'm great. Do you want to comment on I do this, I do that? Uh, sure. I think that um, to riff off something that Lily said, or rather exactly what uh, she said. Um, when I was younger, I used to really love reading scripts. And what I do this, I do that really reminds me of is reading scripts when, you know, first there is a protagonist or like a point of view, and then in the margins or somewhere like in cursive, um, it's also written what's happening around them or how they do what they do. And this is what it reminds me of, but at the same time, um, you are kind of both the surrounding and the narrator. Mm. Um, so you are, uh, to me personally, when I read this, it's, it's, it is as if I am both the city and the person. Yeah. Um, but also, yes, something that you said about life feed something that is happening uh, at the moment of speaking definitely also uh, applies I think especially when you watch somebody like walk and for example talk to you as they walk uh, this is kind of what's happening but it also kind of weirdly reminds me of letters yeah um, because when we write letters or at least when I write letters because uh, this is what I've been doing in quarantine. Um, I kind of describe what's happening and what, you know, what I'm doing or what I'm reading or what I'm thinking, what's happening outside my window, uh, whom I have been talking to. And uh, it is as much of an autobiographical moment as a moment in conversation with somebody to whom it might be mm -hmm. mm, sent. So in a way, we are kind of almost... Uh, readers of a letter and have yeah. a conversation yes yes at least this is how i read it so you're suggesting that i do this i do that because of present tense and other aspects creates maybe a greater intimacy than absolutely more. yeah yeah and i guess i would put in as a footnote an informational footnote in in english and i guess it's true of french and italian uh language rise of novel novels, early novels. The uh, present tense, because novels when they really, as a genre, when they really came into being in the early 19th century and at their height in the mid mid 19th century, uh, it was all third person, lots of omniscience and always past tense, right? But the idea at the very beginning, when you have some crazy writer like Samuel Richardson, who didn't know what the rules were, would write a book like Pamela, which is letters, and it's all present tense, which is absurd in the theoretical, in literary theory, just absurd that some, you could imagine some, some young woman working in a, a upper middle class house saying, I am writing this to you now while Mr. Booby is chasing me around the house. It's a little hard to imagine that Pamela was willing to be chased around the house and was writing while she was doing it. Um, 
And so the, but the original impulse of the novel was to write with that intimacy. And I think poetry, you know, because it really can break all the rules so easily, begins to try to experiment with that intimacy at the time of the rise of the New York school.